Hey everyone, welcome back to Low Kick MMA. I'm Alex Lerman, and today I'm here with Billy Q, Billy Corantillo. So Billy, how's it going to, today by you, my man? Uh, I'm doing great, man. Glad to finally catch up with you again, and I uh, hope all is well on your end as well. Yeah, it's all good over here. Thanks for asking, bro. Appreciate that. So, Billy, uh, you're fighting Edson Barbosa April 15th at Kansas City. Really excited for that. But before we get to that, we'll circle back. I want to get to your fight with Alex Hernandez in December, which was an all-out, bloody, savage war. Um, you were awesome in that one. And I want to know, what did you learn about yourself from that fight? Um, I think, uh, I think, well, first of all, I've never really been cut that bad in a fight before. I've been, uh, you know, like I've had like little cuts over my eye and like little stuff like that, but I've never been, uh, that, that broken open. Um, so it, it's always a, it was reassuring just to know that like, uh, that, that, that cut over my face, wouldn't it be that big of a deal? And I want it, you know, kind of freeze up because, um, because of it. Um, and actually it was like the total opposite. I didn't even think about it really. Um, I knew I was bloodied up a little bit and a lot of people were like, oh man, you really lost that first round and you battled back. Um, but if you really watch the first round and if you know what my game plan was going into the fight, you know, doing a lot of damage to his body, wearing him out, making him work the whole time. Uh, it actually went exactly how I wanted it to. Um, he was pretty much exhausted by the end of the first round. I was just getting going. If you've seen my fights before, sometimes I get off to a slow start. Um, so even though I, I lost that first round, I knew, uh, I, I knew basically what I did in that first round was exactly what I wanted to do. Of course, if I could have avoided uh, getting elbowed in the face, I would have. But uh, I learned that you know I can handle I can handle being in a tough first round, and I and I'm always in a fight, and I can always bounce back and win still. All right. So um, from a viewer's standpoint, obviously that cut looked pretty bad. Uh, how badly hurt were you, if at all? Yeah, no, I wasn't really hurt. It was uh, it was one of those things like he you know he caught me with a good elbow, and it was funny actually before he got me with the elbow. We're moving around and I felt like, I felt like a weird comfort. I'm like, oh man, I think I got this guy. Like, I, you know, I'm landing my good shots. I felt like really comfortable in there. And then I missed with like a big right hand and he end, ends up taking me down and almost getting me in a head arm choke. And I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, no, this can't be happening. Like I was just, I was just exactly where I wanted to be. Now I'm on my back. Next thing you know, he elbows me and I'm like, oh no, this is really not where I want it to be. You know, so it kind of started slipping away a little bit. Um, but the round ended and I knew as long as the, uh, I knew as long as the doctor didn't stop it, I knew I was still in a really good spot because I could just tell with his body language, I could tell I was wearing him down. And I knew that um, as long as I followed my game plan, just make him work the whole fight. I knew I was going to be able to, uh, to get the finish, to get the win. Nice. Well, yeah, that, uh, that standing TKO was, was savage. That was, that was so entertaining to watch seriously. Thank so you. I know you said after the fight, um, you know, you got that dog in you as people like to say, right. Um, where does that dog come from? Is that natural, do you think, or is it learned? I don't know, man. It was it, it, uh, probably a lot of it's probably from my upbringing. I had, uh, you know, I have I have a lot of older brothers. I got four older brothers. Or no, I'm sorry. I got three older brothers and an older sister. Um, and just growing up with, like, the neighborhood kids, getting in fights all the time, watching, you know, pro wrestling and watching moves and, you know, learning not to tap out and learning – the fight's not over until it's over. We used to have like boxing matches in my basement and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it was, if I was naturally born with it, my older, my two oldest brothers who are, you know, they're like 10 years older than me. They always would talk about how tough I was as like a, a like a little baby almost. And uh, so I don't know if I was born with it or just growing up in the environment I was in, it kind of gave me that. Uh, but I know how to kind of harness it now. And I know when to turn it on. And I know that, no matter where I'm at in a fight, maybe I'm getting my ass kicked for two rounds. I know I'm always able to, to dig deep and I'm really never out of a fight. Cause I've really never given up in a fight before. All right. Yeah. Um, so now let's get to your fight with, uh, with Edson Barboza, really excited for this one. So how does it feel to be fighting a veteran of the sport like this? I know you've grappled with guys like Qu uh, Clay Guida before, but not really face a veteran like this in MMA. So how does that feel? Yeah, it, it just feels like it's a, it's a long time coming it's one of the fights that, you know, I remember him knocking out uh, Terry Edmond back in like 2012. And I remember I was not even pro yet. I wasn't even a pro fighter yet. And I remember watching that fight back then 
being like, man, you're going to have to fight guys like this later on. You know what I mean? Like you better be ready for that. And at the time thinking like, oh my God, I do not want to fight this guy, Edson Barbosa. You know, that was the, like, that was like the mentality. I didn't even want to fight a guy like Terry Edmond at the time, you know, cause he was a good striker. Um, but then as the years go on and the, my confidence grew and just getting better every day in the gym, learning from my mistakes, learning from, you know, winning and losing and, and, you know, the trials and tribulations of, of being a professional now for 10 years. Uh, I think it's now is the right time where I think I could fight anyone in the world and still have a lot of confidence and not have that nervous energy. Like, Oh my God, this is, you know, Clay Guida, or this is Edson Barbosa. This is so-and-so. So it took me a long time to get to this point, but I think this is perfect timing. I'm coming off a huge win against Alex Hernandez, who's another guy I've watched for a long time. Uh, obviously, losing to Shane Burgos was a was a big fight for me, and I gained a lot of confidence in that too, just knowing that I can kind of hang with those guys. Uh, so going into this fight, it's more so. It's not like oh, I'm just excited to be here. Now it's like all right, now you got to win this fight. This is what's important now. Actually, winning, not just showing up and making it a good fight. Now it's like, all right, you got to beat this guy. Now, if 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 you are who you think you are, absolutely, yeah, top fifteen ranked opponent. You got to turn it on now, right? Yeah. So, um, fight with Edson Barbosa without giving too much, without giving up too much. Um, what's your game plan in general for this fight, and uh, how do you think you will get the win? Um, yeah, without giving away too much, I would say, uh. He's obviously a really good striker. Um, I think a lot of people underestimate my striking. Um, I've been striking for 13 plus years with boxing, Muay Thai, kickboxing, uh, learning different stuff, adding a lot of new tools. Um, there's a lot of tools that I've never even used in fights before that I've been doing for years. Um, and of course, my grappling, my wrestling, I'm a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Um, I believe he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu as well. I think everyone in Brazil is a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not too sure, but... Um, yeah, there's a lot of different ways I can win. Just, just my game plan that I'm going in there with my coaching, my coaching staff and myself have gotten together and we kind of talked about it. We broke down some of his fights and obviously there's a lot of film on him, but I think the last few fights, uh, have really given away kind of a blueprint on what you need to do to beat him. Um, of course the losses that he's taken are really good guys. So it's like, I need to execute at a super high level and I can't make any big mistakes like I made in the Hernandez fight, giving up, you know, uh, missing with a big punch, giving up takedowns, mistakes at the highest level. uh, They got to be minimal in this fight. So I think the biggest thing for me is not, not giving up those, not feeling like I'm forced to, to try to knock them out. uh, But if I need to drag them out, if I need to wrestle with them, if I need to strike with them, if, you know, if I can't take them down and I got to strike with them, uh, my mentality is I'll do anything I need to do to, to get my hand raised at the end of the fight, even if the whole crowd's booing me for making it boring, or if we're giving like the most exciting fight ever, as long as I'm getting my hand raised at the end of it, that's, that's what's important to me now at this point, whatever it takes. I like that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, within your training camp, obviously you can't take a guy like Edson, uh, easily. You can't, you know, you can't overlook a guy like Edson, a legend like that. Uh, what are some areas of concern you guys see in his game? And what are some areas you guys look to capitalize on? Well, the the biggest thing, you obviously, with Edson Barbosa is his striking is just so good. His legs are extremely dangerous. Uh, he's got good kicks on both sides, his left kick, his right kick. He's got really good knees. Um, so if you're trying to take him down, he can knock your head off. you got to be very cautious of that. Um, just his overall striking game, his ability to keep the fight on the feet, uh, that's a lot of stuff I'm noticing. He, and he will mix in wrestling. He will mix in his own takedown attempts. Um, he does good at keeping you on the cage too. He's got good elbows. He's a little bit taller than me. Um, he's he's unorthodox with his striking. And you can tell he has no fear. Like if you check his kick, he doesn't really care. He, he'll, he'll keep whipping those kicks at you. So I think um, a lot of stuff I'm taking away from him is just – I need to play my game and I know where he's good and I know where I'm good. And I just need to be better at him uh, with breaking him down. You know, I I can watch what he's doing, but I need to be better than him and his other opponents because I'm sure he's getting better. You know, obviously the Bryce Mitchell fight, he got taken down several times. The uh, Giga Kachachki fight, I never can say his name right. Uh, The Giga fight, uh, he ended up getting caught with some, with some shots. Um, so I, my goal is to, to be a better version of Bryce Mitchell and Gija and go out there and, and 
put my game, my, basically use my game plan and not let him get comfortable and use his game plan. Get off to a quick start. Yep. I yep. totally understand that. So obviously can't look too uh, too far past this fight. We got to focus on what's at hand. But mm -hmm. let's say, you know, you get the win over Barboza in the top 15. What are some uh, some ranked top 15 featherweights that you'd like to see uh, after this one? <laughs> uh, there, you know, I don't want to look too far ahead of it. And I know I don't want to get I don't want to get sound uh, bitten and be like, oh, he's already, you know, he's already looking at you know, uh, you know, six through 10 or whatever. Um, there are definitely some big names out there. Um, there's some guys in the division that have been hurt that, that haven't really fought in a while. Um, so basically what I'm, what I'm, obviously the, the next fight, go out there and beat Barbosa convincingly, have a name ready to call out above that, you know, in the top 10, uh, or right outside that top 10 range, probably top 10. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is there's a lot of guys I feel like I match up well with, but I just don't know what their schedule is going to be like. So I want to wait till the fight gets a little bit closer. Um, but I'll definitely have a name ready uh, for that post fight interview. But in the meantime, I don't want to call someone out and they're like, Oh, he's out for the next year and a half, or he's already, he just got booked with so-and-so. So I'm, I'm watching them and I'm, I'm being patient and seeing how things are playing out. Uh, but like you said, I don't want to, I, can't overlook Edson Barbosa. Like that'd be silly. He has so many big wins. He has so many big fights. And, uh, but I'm definitely keeping that in mind because I know how the UFC likes that. And if I'm like, Oh, I'll fight anyone next. Next thing you know, I'm fighting back down the rankings and there's no point of taking a fight in the top 15. If I don't plan on moving up after that. Exactly. Yeah. That's a great point. So now let's, uh, let's get to your activity. So you fought in December two months ago, fighting now two months from now in April um, with obviously we're not naming any names, but how active do you want to be this year? How many fights would you like after this one? Yeah, so I had a um, uh, an, an injury plagued 2022. Um, it was still the best year of my life, having my baby and then getting that huge win over Alex Hernandez and then also cornering Matt Frivola. He got two knockouts, uh, so, you know, some good some good, good corner work, I think. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, uh, I told Sean Shelby right after the Hernandez fight, I said, we're going to get stitched up. The day the stitches come out, let's get a fight booked. We we're pretty close to that. Um, I definitely, I, I, I always write my goals out for the year. Uh, this year, three and zero, three finishes, uh, three performance bonuses, a new contract. Those are those are all things that uh, I would like and that I'm working towards. Um, getting this first win, this first finish out of the way, having a good training camp with no injuries. That's the first step. Uh, but definitely three and zero this year would be good. I would I would love to do four fights, but it's just so hard in the UFC, especially with training camps. You got to really do everything right. Your body can only take so much. So I would be satisfied with if I go three and zero, three finishes. That is that'll be the best year I could ask for. Yeah, I love the goal setting, and also congrats on uh, on the baby. Really, thank you. Of course. Um, so you said, you know, you wanted four fights this year. Are there any, uh, any venues that you're eyeing up any potential cards down the line this year that you're, that you're looking at that you want to be on? Yeah, I definitely got some, uh, I got some bucket list fights that I still need to get done. Um, Kansas city definitely wasn't on the <laughs> list of fights that I needed, but I'm still really excited about it. And I, I've, I've been telling everyone in my family, cause they all go out there and they make a big deal out of it. And, and they all come out and support me. And I basically told him like, listen, this isn't a vacation for me. I'm going out there. It's a business trip. It's I'm going to be, I'm going to be there for the week. Nothing on my mind, but winning that fight, beat him, you know, beat Barbosa, fly home the next day. Um, but moving forward, uh, there's the, the, the big ones on my list are fighting in my hometown, Buffalo, Buffalo, New York, uh, where the Sabres play. That would be the num my number one choice. And it's a place that I really, I would love to go to before my career is over because I took a lot of pro fights there and obviously I have a big following. I grew up there. Everyone around there knows me. And I think that'd be a really special thing. I'd probably get emotional walking out, uh, you know, just thinking about it uh, kind of gives me chills growing up in that arena, watching the Sabres growing up. Um, that would be the number one choice. Uh, where I live now, where I've lived the last 10 years in Tampa, that would be a, a really special one too. Um, that Those two would be the number one and two. And then I think traveling and going to like a different country, doing like a London card or like somewhere in Europe, I think that'd be a big one too. I almost fought in Europe a couple times before I got in the UFC. I was trying to get on Cage Warriors. Uh, it just never panned out, but it was always something that I'd want to do. Go to like a different person's country and fight them in their backyard. 
Uh, that'd be a really cool one. So I think those would be the ones that, uh, that are on my bucket list and ones that I would really like to do before my UFC career is over. Yeah, I'm sure I could speak for everyone when I say um, we don't want to see you at the Apex anymore. I think Billy Q deserves a crowd every single time you step in the octagon. So definitely want to see you at some of those locations, of course. So now getting to some uh, some upcoming fights in the UFC um, with some big stakes. Obviously, in your division, uh, the night that same night that you're fighting Barbosa, the headliner is Holloway versus Arnold Allen. Do you have any thoughts on how this fight will go? You know, these guys at the top of your division, I'm sure you've watched them a bit. So, yeah. Yeah, so um, I've been, uh, man, I've been a huge Max Holloway fan for years. Uh, Obviously, he was doing his thing before I was in the UFC, so I kind of became like a fanboy of his. And now we're we're hopefully getting to the the point where like we could get matched up together. Uh, But he's definitely been one of my favorite fighters ever. Um, I do think Arnold Allen is a very tough fight for him or for anyone in our division. I think he does everything right. He's a good wrestler, good striker, good jujitsu. Uh, looked incredible against Dan Hooker. Um, so that's going to be a really tough fight for Holloway. I'm rooting for Max Holloway, but man, I wouldn't like to bet. I'm glad I'm not allowed to bet on anymore because that's a really tough fight to bet on. Arnold Allen is so good and he's not that big of a name, but he's very, um, very good everywhere. So I'm rooting for Max. Does Max get it done? I don't know. Is it going to be a, uh, you know, a changing of the guard? I don't know, man. Are we going to see vintage Max Holloway put on, you know, like a lot of people thought Kelvin Cater was going to upset him and, and he had a, a fight of his life. So we'll see, man. I, uh, I'm obviously gonna be watching that one. We'll, we'll, we'll see, man. Hopefully I'll be doing my victory laps in the, uh, in the, uh, in the UFC in the back, back room, but I'll definitely hopefully be watching that one and I'm rooting for Max Holloway. Nice. Yeah. So I got one more for you now. So obviously uh, just got announced yesterday. I think Aljamain Sterling, Henry Cejudo, uh, who do you got in this one? Oh yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Aljamain Sterling. Uh, I've been I've gotten pretty close with him in the last few years. Um, obviously, I'm good friends with Matt Frivola. We 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 started training together in Tampa, and then he's gone back to his hometown of Long Island. Uh, I've visited them. I've probably been there about ten times uh, at Law MMA, and so Aljo is super cool with me. He uh, has shown me moves. He's broken things down. I love following his Instagram. I think he does a really good job making content, which I'm trying to get better at. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with, uh, with Aljo because not only because I, I, I personally like him, I think he's a lot bigger than Henry Cejudo. I think no matter what Cejudo says, I think that time off is there's going to be a little bit of ring rust there. His timing is going to be off a little bit. Um, Aljo has been on a, a great run so far and he does a really good job taking care of his body. So he's probably going to go into that fight a hundred percent. So uh, yeah, I'm going to rock with Aljo. I'm interested to see what the odds are on that. But um, I'm going to go with uh, Sterling on that one. All right. So um, I know you have a large presence on social media. Obviously, you know, you post. I see you posting a lot on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> Can you just uh, tell the people what are your, some of your hobbies and interests outside of MMA? Oh, man, that's that's always a great question, because um, if, if people know my backstory, I didn't um, I didn't start training MMA like really seriously until I was 21 years old. So I am still like catching up. I'm still playing catch up and I'm still learning every day. Um, so most of my hobbies are, you know, doing jujitsu, wrestling, uh, hitting mids, boxing. Um, another thing I do a lot is I coach like a lot of, I coach a lot of my amateur fighters and even some pro fighters now. Um, when I'm done fighting my, like my two biggest goals in my life right now are to be a world champion and then to coach a world champion. Um, so I'm going to basically, keep, keep stay in the MMA, MMA scene for, for many years to come with this baby. Now, I think probably my biggest hobby is just hanging out with him and doing stuff with him, going for runs with my baby. Um, I love going to the beach. I love being in Florida. I love being outside. Um, I love getting fresh air. Um, I'm working on a lot of the content. You can see my new little studio room that I got built here. Um, and then, you know, just relaxing a lot, a lot of little stuff. You know, I like to shoot guns. I like to, um, uh, uh, like lifting weights, just being at the gym. And, uh, I don't know, man, there's, it's, it's, I don't really have any like big hobbies that, that distract me because I still feel like I'm playing catch up in terms of, I got off to such a late start and I'm still learning stuff every day. So a lot of my hobbies, uh, do revolve around MMA. Uh, but I have been kind of opening up a little bit more recently. 
All right. So, Billy, I just want to thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate everything you had to say. I want to congratulate you on your 10 years of being a pro MMA, MMA oh, fighter. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Congrats on the baby once again. And now if you want to uh, drop any, obviously, a lot of people know your social medias, but for those who don't, drop your social medias and uh, shout out any sponsors. I'll give you that time right now. Of course, man. Yeah, Billy Q MMA on Instagram and Twitter are like the main ones. Uh, uh, Billy Q MMA on OnlyFans. Check out my OnlyFans behind the scenes. That's a big one for me. And I got a bunch of sponsors, so I won't waste your time. But uh, thanks for having me, man. Was, I'm glad we were able to, to finally do this after a while. Yeah, of course. Thank you, man. Well, uh, April 15th, Edson Barboza, Billy Quarantillo. Look out for if it's anything like his last fight, it's going to be a banger. There's going to be blood. It's going to be savage. So everyone <laughs> watching, please look out for this fight. Billy, thanks again for your time, and I hope you have a great rest of your camp. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.